Conservation of Momentum and Laws of Motion Part 2 The first law of motion indicates that when an unbalanced force acts on an object, its velocity changes, that is, it gets acceleration. Acceleration of an object depends on the force applied to it. How do we measure a force? Let us now understand Newton's second law of motion. Let us discuss some examples from our everyday life. During the game of table tennis, if the ball hits a player, it does not hurt him. But when a fast-moving cricket ball hits a spectator, it may hurt him. A small mass, like a bullet, may cause an injury or death when fired from a gun. These examples suggest that the impact produced by an object depends on its mass and velocity. If an object is to be accelerated, a greater force is required to give greater velocity. This means there is some quantity of importance that combines mass and velocity of an object. Momentum Momentum was introduced by Newton. The momentum, P, of an object is defined as the product of its mass, m, and velocity, v, that is, p equals m v. Momentum has direction as well as magnitude. Its direction is the same as that of velocity, v. The SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second. Since the application of an unbalanced force brings change in the velocity of an object, it is therefore a force which produces a change of momentum. Let us consider a situation in which a car with a dead battery is to be pushed along a straight road to give it a speed of 1 meter per second which is sufficient to start the engine. If one or two persons give a sudden push to it, it hardly starts. But a continuous push over some time results in a gradual acceleration of car to the speed. It means that the change of momentum of the car is not only determined by the magnitude of the force but also by the time during which the force is exerted. Thus, the force necessary to change the momentum of an object depends on the time rate at which the momentum is changed. The second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of force. The second law of motion is often part of the actions in our everyday life. In a high jump athletic event, the athletes are made to fall either on a cushioned bed or on a sand bed. This is to increase the time of the athlete's fall to stop after making the jump. This decreases the rate of change of momentum and the force. A fielder on the ground while catching a fast-moving cricket ball pulls his hand backward with the ball. By doing so, the fielder increases the time during which the high-velocity moving ball decreases to zero. Thus, the acceleration of the ball decreases and therefore the impact of catching the fast-moving ball is also reduced.
If the ball is stopped suddenly, then its high velocity decreases to zero in a short interval of time. Thus the rate of change of momentum of the ball will be large. Therefore, a large force will have to be applied for holding the catch which may hurt the palm of the fielder. The third law of motion states that when one object exerts a force on another object, the second object instantaneously exerts a force back on the first. These two forces are always equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. These forces act on different objects and never on the same object. The two opposing forces are also known as action and reaction forces. In the game of football, sometimes while looking at the football and trying to kick it with a greater force, one player tends to collide with the other player. Both feel hurt because each applies a force on the other. Consider two spring balances connected together. The fixed end of balance B is attached with a rigid support. When a force is applied on the free end of spring balance A, it is observed that both the spring balances show the same readings on their scales. It means that the force exerted by the spring balance A on balance B is equal but in opposite direction to the force exerted by the balance B on balance A. The force which balance A exerts on balance B is called action and the force of balance B on balance A is called reaction. This gives us an alternative statement of the third law of motion that is, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you are standing at rest and intend to start walking, you will apply a muscular force on the road and will push the road backwards. The road exerts an equal and opposite reaction force on your feet to make you move forward. Even though action and reaction forces are always equal in magnitude, these forces may not produce accelerations of equal magnitudes. This is because both the forces act on different objects which may have different masses. For example, when a gun is fired, it exerts a forward force on the bullet. The bullet exerts an equal and opposite reaction force on the gun which results in the recoil of the gun. Since the gun has a much greater mass than the bullet, the acceleration of the gun is much less than the bullet. Another example is when the sailor jumps out of a rowing boat as he jumps forward. The force on the boat moves it backwards. Suppose two objects A and B of masses MA and MB are traveling in the same direction along a straight line at different velocities UA and UB respectively and there are no other unbalanced external forces acting on them. Let UA, that is, the velocity of the object A, be greater than UB, that is, the velocity of the object B, UA is greater than UB, and the two objects collide with each other. During collision, which lasts for time t, the object A exerts a force FAB on object B, and the object B exerts a force FBA on object A. Suppose VA and VB are the velocities of the two objects A and B after the collision. 
the momenta of object A before and after the collision are MA, UA and MA, VA respectively. According to the third law of motion, the force FAB exerted by the object A on object B and the force FBA exerted by the object B on object A must be equal and opposite to each other. Since MAUA plus MBUB is the total momentum of the two objects before the collision and MAVA plus MBVB is their total momentum after the collision, we can say that the total momentum of both the objects remains unchanged or conserved provided there are no other external forces. Thus, the sum of momenta of the two objects before collision is equal to the sum of momenta after collision provided there is no external unbalanced force acting on them. This is known as a law of conservation of momentum. To conclude, the three laws of motion by Newton and the law of conservation momentum are some of the most renowned and acknowledged concepts in the history of science.